to have your copy of Where Are God's Miracles Today, Church, by Dr. Indy Aldu. Visit MyMiracleTV.org or call right now at 1229-638-1065. It's good to know that God's genes, DNA, and personality are full of miracles hands down. For Him, it is easily natural to be supernatural. Therefore, any church, preacher, or religious person who rejects God's miracles rejects God himself. Sadly, today's Christianity is full of man-made religious programs, dead theological sermons, emotional ceremonies, and phony rituals. But where are God's real miracles? So call 1-229-638-1065 now or visit MyMiracleTV.org to get your copy of Where Are God's Miracles Today, Church. For over 30 years in nearly 40 nations around the world, God has been using Dr. Andy Aldo mightily, according to John 14, 12, to raise many physically dead and dying people, heal the sick, operate many special miracles, as well as winning many sinners to Christ. As the author of the internationally best-selling series known as Raising the Dead, Dr. Odu has been honorably received by many world leaders. Now, ladies and gentlemen, log on to RaisingTheDead.org for additional details because Dr. Odu is coming to your area for a great meeting and you need to be there. Not too long ago, and lovingly, probably this brother who will be hearing me, I'll be mentioning that I love you, brother. And our brother, you know, we call him Bishop A.D. Long. Wonderful man of God. Love him. If you're listening to me, brother, God loves you. You better repent and turn around. You see what has happened to him recently in the news when the, those three young men, two or three of them, sued him and publicized his situation with them secretly. What, you know, they said that, you know, some kind of accusation. I cannot substantiate it, but based upon some of the investigation, it could be true, it could be wrong. I don't know. But they were saying that uh, he possibly sexually, you know, he traveled with some of them and sexually molested them or what. And the thing is resolved, they said, in a cool way without going to court and all of this. But the problem is not even because of the two or three young men coming out to uh, expose what happened behind the scenes between him and them. Look at this brother. He's a wonderful man of God. He was married and divorced and remarried. You know it. Okay? And in the eyes of God, who could have told him the truth? So, now, uh, brother, I'm not hitting on the head. I'm just simply telling the truth. God allowed this situation here to shake you and shake the church so that we will repent. All our doubters who are living in such kind of situation have to repent. And God loves brother Eddie Long. He loves you. He doesn't want you to go to hell. There's hell in front of you, the preachers, who are really watering down the word of God. You're living wrong. Whether you, can, whether you are a big name preacher or not, whether you're the Pope, you're Billy Graham, you're Eddie Long, or you're Joyce Meyer, or whosoever you may be, or, or, or Richard Roberts, or Catherine Coleman, or, God doesn't care. He doesn't care who out there is. He wants me to submit to his word. So we have applauded. We have cheered up those who are living lifestyle of immorality and adultery and fornication. And now we are pushing, trying to push again homosexuality. But you see, when we started tolerating one sin, it led us to tolerate another one, another one, another one, another one. And immorality, you see immorality, I'm talking about sexual immorality. Whether you are a fornicator, you are adulterer, you are homosexual, a lesbian, or you, you are a, you know, a, a bestial, you know, a, you know, bestial, uh, you know, somebody practicing bestiality, or incest. It's still sin. We cannot condemn one like homosexuality and justify or condone another, you know, the sin of adultery. It's the same sin. And I've said it very well. People have said, okay, yeah, I made a mistake. I married. Now I'm already my second and third and fourth or fifth or tenth married. And God knows that I've made, you know, a, a mistake. So he justifies. He doesn't condemn me. And uh, it's grace. So I'll keep on doing that. I say, let me ask you a question. If you're a church leader, and you have two homosexuals or two lesbians who come to your church and tell you that, okay, I'm saved. I've repented. I've asked Jesus to come into my life. But I'm still staying with my partner anyway because the government or the courthouse or the mayor 
or the, you know, who told you has married me, so I'm going to stay there anyway. I'm forgiven, but I will just keep on living. What would you do as a church leader? And you know for sure that is not a sincere repentance because the person is still practicing the same thing. How do you tell him? What do you tell him to do is walk out. They have got to separate, they have got to split. If a young man or a young woman sleeping with a girl with whom they're not married, they're single, but they're just shocking to get out living in you know, a lifestyle of immorality. When they tell you they repent and they're still practicing it, they go back home and sleep on the same bed and you know, practicing sin of, of, of fornication, even with their lip service of repentance, it doesn't work because your action has to back up with your words. And John the Baptist said it well. They, you know, the act is laid at the root. Any tree that doesn't produce fruits, 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 we've got to allow our lifestyle to go in, in line or in line with what we confess. You don't say that I'm saved and you're still living as a sinner. You'll be deceiving yourself and you're on your way to hell unless if you repent sincerely and turn away from your sins. So here we see in Hebrews, that chapter 13, verse 4, it says, God will surely definitely judge all homongers or fornicators and deny it as adulterers. You see, yeah, but I know of this great name preacher on the television. He has a big ministry. He's on television, radio. He has multi-million dollar complex. Who cares? God doesn't care about all these material things we're calling the ministries. Ministry is God calling us into it. His service, first of all, to God and to his people. It's all about material buildings and TVs. We use material things to identify that with ministry. Ministry is service. Whatever natural talents God has given you, you can preach or pray or sing or teach or minister. I mean, it's service. Amen. Now let's continue. Lord, I'm enjoying myself here. And I know some people who are listening to me say, man, Lord have mercy. They say, this preacher is really very tough. It's because I love you. There's hell in front of you, man. There's, you know, there's hell in front of you, woman. The way to hell is full of good intentions and it's full of a lot of people. And hell is getting empty and empty every day. Oh, I mean, it's getting up. Uh, it's magnifying itself. Every sinner that drops into hell is as though hell hasn't swallowed nothing. He's saying, you know, there's still more room. One time I've seen a bumper sticker. Somebody said, I've been to hell and come back, you know, and hell is empty. I said, maybe that person hasn't, you know, I'm not sorry. He said, hell is full. That he's been there and come back, so, you know, he, the message he's telling the world is that hell is full, so there's no more room. I say, that's a lie. Hell is enlarging itself every time. And a lot of people are going to hell through churches. Very sad. Instead of the church being in a stumbling block to the gates of hell and saying that you're not going to be swallowing and taking people there, we're helping the devils to take more people to hell through some of our teachings and our preachings. In the wrong way that we are doing. So God now is calling men and women, people who fear God so much so that they want to stand on the side of God and declare the whole counsel of God without compromise, without being bought by money or prestige or popularity. And I'm one of them. Hallelujah. So now let's go to the book of uh, Proverbs. I said chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7. If you have time, read the entire three chapters. Very interesting. And here, of course, uh, we know the writer of that book of uh, uh, Proverbs is Solomon, King Solomon, the wisest man after Jesus who has ever walked on our planet. Now, he blew some of the teachings he gave. He said some good stuff. But when he came to practicality, he didn't practice some of them. This is what some of us preachers are doing. We preach so well, but when it comes to doing what we're preaching, we're not doing it. But we can learn from his advice. Anyway, so he's talking to young men, young people, men, male. However, since we know that our planet is not only made up of males, but females too, we can also alternate back and forth. And when you read chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7 of Proverbs, whether you're a male or a female, watch out. Because temptation is not only towards men. It's not only women trying to induce or seduce men to fall into sin. Some men too are seducing women to fall into sin. So either way, what I'm saying here to bring balance, we can use the he or the man or the boy that Solomon wrote in Proverbs 5, 6, and 7, you can translate it also to females or girls or women, okay? So, uh, depending upon who is listening to me right now and what nation you are from. Now, let's go chapter 5. 
He said, my son, and you can say my daughter, okay? Attend or pay attention to my wisdom. And bow down thy ear to my understanding. Wisdom and understanding is what will save your life from all this immoral world we're living in. World full of immorality and fornication and homosexuality and adultery and all that. Wisdom and understanding are the key things in this verse 1 of chapter 5 that can help us out.